wonderful technology there. Because look, I mean, technology is so advanced. <laughs> People sit here and da da da, and I can, I can write home and send pictures, and surely they have something wonderful for birth. <laughs> well, even when they didn't have very good technology, when the technology was only forceps, right? <laughs> Everybody knows forceps, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was easy to, to, for doctors to convince rich men this would be better. Let me stick these in your wife and pull, and it'll be so much better. And kings believed that, all these rich guys believed that, and an unbelievable number of women were torn up inside and babies' heads. <coughs> yeah, I don't need to tell you all the complications that came from interfering with birth with forceps. And that also meant all these women now, instead of being upright and having gravity to help them give birth, were on their backs. And then it wasn't long before they would tie you on your back. Because what if you got up and did what your body said and, and got into an undignified position? Because it's so undignified for a woman to be on her hands and knees, according to Western thought. This is not true for thought in Asia or indigenous people all over the world. They would go, do what you feel like doing. It's probably the best. <laughs> but only in you know, Europe and America did this idea that a nicely behaved lady would be on her back to give birth. And oh, by the way, if she doesn't want to stay there, let's just tie her down. Well, they did that to me in 1966. And I thought, these people are crazy. Am I in a medieval torture chamber? And I'm paying for this? I can't believe it. <clears throat> and the amazing thing, it wasn't for many years that I found out that happened to two-thirds of American women the same year I gave birth. Two-thirds. That's how brainwashed a whole population can get about a basic bodily function. Incredible. And how do we get so confused and scared and bewildered in the U.S.? hundred years ago, the obstetricians that were just beginning to specialize, they said, there should be no more midwives. Let's just get rid of them. They made it illegal in the states that had the most influence, which was, you know, Boston, the East Coast. And of course, people out in the middle of the country and the rural places where people had connection with nature and animals, they still knew how to give birth. Or even Italians. Some Italian families knew how to give birth because they lived in the kitchen. You know, cooking all the time and then, you know, laboring and telling stories and having a baby. You know, mostly in the kitchen. And the <laughs> it's Italians. But if you were, you know, anything else, you, you might have missed. And uh, you might not know that your own parents were born at home. Both of my parents were born at home, but I didn't know it until I'd been a midwife for a long time. So that's how much your culture can be lost. So thoroughly, so quickly, that people don't even know how their bodies work anymore. This is the condition that every European country is finding increasingly true. So I think probably everybody in this room already knows that women's bodies work, and that's why you're here. But how do you convince the rest of Sweden that the woman's body is not a bad engineering flaw? <laughs> By who? Who made this engineering flaw? Nature? Well, that's an interesting question because we're one of, let's say, about 5,000 species of mammals. Is it really probable that we'd be the only one that can't give birth? I don't think so. <laughs> it would be really a big leap of, uh, I don't know. Very strange, but that's what most people think. 
and most politicians, unfortunately. So, um, so I'm glad to hear the work uh, that I w uh, that you've done here in the Stockholm area, so that now you can have home birth. That you made enough of a, a fuss uh, and enough of a movement that now you can have baby number two at home and it's okay, or baby number three. So let's go for baby number one. <laughs> why not? I mean, that's what we did. And why would it be different? Uh, why do you have to go in and have a bad time if you'd rather be at home for your first taste when you have a good time? 